And hello, lovely people. It's wonderful, isn't it, to be here. And as the uh, group, worship group, has just reminded us on the amazing, wonderful love that we have received from God and the protection that we have received from God. And so today, this is almost like an experiment that uh, that trial period of let's push the boat out a little bit further and let's see what we can do with collective worship. And at this point, uh, it's right for me to indeed thank the team that for all their hard work, their planning, their splicing, their editing, their putting together, uh, and just keeping us on track as a core. And so, thank you for all your hard work over these past 16 months. And also, the, the extent of our online worship is far-reaching. And there has been so many comments from other people in other lands who have really enjoyed Worcester worship. And it is thanks to this team for putting it together and, uh, and we, we do thank God for them. And so this morning, it is just going to be a short time. It's going to be fairly informal. But the important thing is we are together in God's house. So let's listen again as the worship band plays. Thank you, Diane. Uh, it really is good to be here and we're going to be creative and open-minded about what worship means because we know that we can't all uh, sing together but we can worship in different ways can't we and you can clap and you can tap and you can sway or you can just lift your hearts to god in your own way so do if you can stand stand um, do whatever you feel right we will sing the words for you so I just want to start by sharing um, some verses from Psalm 33 to, just to encourage our hearts and to help us expect something from this morning. Because I do hope that you've come expecting something and expecting to be blessed and expecting for something amazing to happen. But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. We put our hope in the Lord. I thought we might as well say amen. We put our hope in the Lord. Amen. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Lord, our hope is in you alone. So with that open mind, however you want to praise this morning, we're going to sing the song again, Beautiful One.
And the Bible reading this morning is taken from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had gone home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even the outside door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get to him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralysed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. Thank you, Janet. We're going to start to prepare our hearts for the message that Major Diane will bring to us um, in a moment or two. Very back out, we're going to be thinking about the second half and um, the hope that we have for this next period of time. Just to help that um, kind of reflection and prayer, we have put some um, hands on your chairs and there's pens there as well. For you to just have a think about as we sing the next song, what it is that you want to vote for the next period of time. What is it that you're going to give in this second half? Later on, we, if you leave your hands, we will place them onto, we've just moved to the side, we will place them onto our mercy seat uh, later for you as we think about this idea of committing him to his hands. And so I just want to start to challenge you really about what it is that you're recommitting today. It might be a time for you to reaffirm your faith, being um, away from each other in our church. Or it might be a time for you to think about something that you need to give back to the Lord, that you know has become your own, and giving it back to the rightful owner. Or it might be that you've had a very particular calling placed upon your heart, and that you want to explore that in these moments. And so whatever's right for you, going to take this time now into your hands, Lord.
lovely people. Tomorrow the 19th of July will be a momentous day. But it doesn't mean that we have to forget the things of the past, the things that have enhanced our safety over these months. The other significant reality about July the 19th is that it's halfway of the second half of the year. And I wonder what that second half of the year will bring to all of us. Kermit the Frog from the Muppet fame sang halfway down the stairs is the stair where I sit. It's not at the bottom, it's not at the top. So there is this stair where I stop. You know, many times I've been on that halfway stair, half, whether that is halfway or half time, half is the bridge between what has happened and what is going to happen next. That halfway point gives us a reference from which we can gauge our progress with still space and time to do something that will encourage us to keep us moving forward. You know, we have a lot of second halves in our lives and sometimes that causes us to consider the second half of our life in the things that will not never be the same again. There is the account in the Gospels of the man and his four friends who um, came to Jesus for healing, as we have heard in Mark chapter 2. So for that man and his friends, the second half was so different from the first. From now on, they would never be the same again. So as we enter the second part of this year, let's take time to consider where we have come from, the things that we have experienced and seek to discern where God is leading us. One of the things we can take into the second half is connection, is being together, something that so many of us just took for granted. It is only when we lost the choice, we realize the miss and the need of doing things together. The group of friends who helped their paralytic friend, they, they knew the need, they knew the solution. And even when the way was blocked by other people who had needs of their own, these four friends wouldn't be put off by what they saw, they pressed forward. And as a nation, through these trying months, we have found ways of connection with each other. From standing on our doorstep clapping, to the Zoom meetings, to the online worship, connection has been the key. At times, it's right, and others, it's been wrong. We haven't managed it. But for us during lockdown, connection has been most important. And so as next part of our journey as a church fellowship, as individuals, we must keep in our sights the importance of connection, of being together. The second half gives us great opportunities to take stock the way in which we have viewed things in the past. Certainly from our territorial leaders, we have been invited to, um, and been reminded, should I say, to do the things that are important to us as the Salvation Army and as being part of the body of Christ, that everyone is equally loved by God and that everyone, whatever their gender, colour, lifestyle or sexual preference, is not only welcome, but they are to experience that sense of belonging within this core fellowship and to take their rightful place within the body of Christ. Through these 16 months, how many times have we heard about the new normal? 
what will be the new normal regarding our faith and the working out of that faith? Will it be a new and deeper reliance upon God? And what of the next period that we are to live through in this second half? Do we really want it to be the same as the previous? We have this golden opportunity of being intentional as to what the second half of our faith journey is going to be like. And I just pray that you are able to take time to take stock and to enjoy the second half of this journey. May God bless you. To finish off our worship this morning, we're going to sing a song of proclamation, which is how great is our God. So this is your last opportunity to find these different ways to praise and worship. Uh, so again, if you can stand and you'd like to stand, that's your opportunity now.